Hey Curious and welcome back! With so many cancellations of premieres and second or third season shootings being delayed due to this pandemic, many of the fans were about to give up on finding a brand new series that is worthwhile to watch while we are still in 2020. However, with the premiere of the new series, The Queen's Gambit, starring the Spanish, English, Argentine, Scottish, American actress Anya Taylor-Joy, lovers of good quality productions can be more than reassured that it is a promising one. How did this young woman begin her career? What was the star's first audition and why did it cause her to cry a lot afterward? If you want the answers to all these questions and to learn more about the star then stay with me until the end but before we continue don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications to make sure you never miss any of our videos. Before I tell you all about the new Netflix series everyone is talking about let me tell you a little bit about Anya's origins which are varied. It turns out that this 24-year-old girl was born in Miami, Florida on April 16, 1996. However, that was somehow the result of mere chance since she soon moved to Argentina, one of her father's two countries of origin, since she also has Scottish roots. Her mother, on the other hand, is Spanish and English. Do you see why I was telling you that this young lady had quite the mixed origins? Well, as I was saying before, she lived in Argentina until she was six years old and that's when her parents decided to move to London. The first years were not easy in her new home because little Anya did not speak any English. However, with the support of her parents and above all thanks to the activities they decided to enroll her in, she gradually gained confidence. And what were those activities? Well, it turns out that Anya studied ballet and other types of dance. In addition, precisely because of the mix of so many different genes, her beauty began to catch the attention of some advertising companies. But contrary to the way most people saw her, and as a fun fact, according to what she told The Independent during an interview in 2017, she always saw herself as a girl with too many masculine features and that made her feel very unattractive as a woman. But after a while of appearing in adverts, she was recommended to attend several castings that were looking to fill in roles in movies or TV shows. One of those calls was for the role in the movie Maleficent. That was actually the young girl's first audition. In an interview with BuzzFeed, she said that while she didn't look anything like Angelina Jolie, she went in for the role of the younger version of Angie's character. In an interview, she also added that for her, being a Disney fan, it was a big deal and that she cried a lot when she found out that Paul went to someone else. But the truth is that life had prepared a very different acting debut for her. In the same year that the Disney movie about the sorceress of a broken heart was released, Anya made her debut in the film Vampire Academy. However, her participation was so brief that her name was not even included in the final credits. But well, discreet or not, at least the performance opened the doors for other productions. Not only cinematic, but she also appeared in music videos such as Red Lips by Skrillex. But the best was yet to come for her. In 2015, just one year after the Vampire Academy was released, director Robert Eggers gave her the lead role in the horror film The Witch and he couldn't have been more right with his casting decision because almost immediately both the film and the young actress received very good reviews during international film festivals such as Sundance Film Festival that year. Now all the doors were wide open for the girl and her career had shot up to the very top. Her performance in that captivating production attracted the attention of other directors of similar genres. Thus, in 2016, Anya was chosen to appear in a science fiction horror film about artificial intelligence titled Morgan. In addition to that, the same year she also appeared in Barry, a biographical film dedicated to the former president of the United States, Barack Obama. Now, listing all the films in which she has appeared in would be a little bit tedious, won't you agree? Besides, if you're a fan of the actress, you would surely have watched them all by now, or am I wrong? However, one that is certainly worth mentioning is the wonderful movies by M. Night Shyamalan, Split, which was released in 2016, and Glass, that came out last year. These two films are part of the Unbreakable trilogy, or East Rail 177 trilogy as it is officially known, and the first movie of them is Unbreakable from 2000. In the two recent films that she starred in, Anya played alongside the Scottish actor James McAvoy, and in last year's movie she also shared the screen with Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis. All those participations had made her gain the role of Bev Harmon, the main character of the new Netflix series The Queen's Gambit, that was released a few weeks ago. And while most of us have been seriously bested by this year, it hasn't been as hard on the star. Well, not professionally speaking at least. Now I say this because at the same time as the premiere of the Netflix show, two films which Anya stars in have also been released, The New Mutants and Emma, which is based on the 1815 novel by Jane Austen of the same name. Although looking at this from a personal
personal point of view, maybe this 2020 hasn't been so benevolent to her as we thought. It seems that this year she has ended her relationship with Ewan Macken, an Irish actor and model, with whom at some point it was even said that she was engaged to. Could it be that in this case the phrase success often comes at a high price actually applied? Or with so many projects on the horizon, could the actress have somewhat neglected the relationship? What do you think, Curious? And while we're on the subject of success, what has been the key ingredient in making the Queen's Gambit so well received by the audience? Well, before we talk about that, it would be a good time to briefly explain what the show is about. So, the series is an adaptation of Walter Tevis's novel, in which he talks about the life of Beth Harmon, who, after the passing of her mother, is sent to an orphanage, where she starts to learn how to play chess, and where, due to the medicine provided by the institution, she develops an addiction. And while the girl turns out to be a genius and reaches success in the game, she also has to battle her problems, as well as trauma. But if you want to find out how captivating the game can be, you'll have to find out by watching the show. And almost immediately, the audiences were captivated by the production. In fact, the account of the events led more than one of us to believe that we had not read the original work and that it was a series based on real life events. But no, everything is the work of the mastery and majesty with which the directors, script writers and other people elaborated the miniseries. All the above answers the previously posed questions. All the success is the result of a combination of all those elements. And of course, we cannot fail to mention the extraordinary and captivating performance of Anya and the rest of the cast. In the opinion of many, The Queen's Gambit is nowhere near the best series in the history of the streaming platform. However, it is one of the biggest and most pleasant surprises of 2020. In fact, unlike what many think because of the plot, it is not a production that is too dense or too complicated to understand. On the contrary, it's one of those series you can finish watching in a single weekend. Okay, so I know that I've been constantly repeating the name of the series all this time and I haven't explained its meaning. Well, for those who have not seen it yet and know next to nothing about this exciting game, Queen's Gambit is one of the oldest known chess opening moves. I could explain it in further, but if I start talking about 1.d4, d5, 2.c4, you will get confused, so I'll just leave it at it's a technical move. And since I've already mentioned it, the series is based on the 1983 novel written by the already deceased Walter Tevis, and although the storyline is fictitious, it is inspired by some facts and real life characters. It was the author of the novel himself who, in an article written in the New York Times a year before his passing in 1984, said that he had written this book as a tribute to all the intelligent women who have existed throughout human history. But at the same time, he also admitted that while writing it, he was thinking about some professional chess players, all of them men, including himself. However, the writer himself was quite aware that almost always the student surpasses the master, although in this case, we should rather say the creation surpasses its creator. And I say this because in the novel and in the series, Beth possesses a level much higher than the C level that the writer said he had in his article. Walter's exact words were as follows. I started playing chess with my sister and the kids on my street. I once won a $250 prize and became a class C player. So to all of you curious who haven't seen the show yet, are you going to give it a try now? So what can we expect from Anya in the near future? Well, maybe some people don't know, but some time ago it was announced that she will be the one to take over Charlize Theron as her character of Furiosa in the prequel to the successful Mad Max Fury Road, a project that the Australian director George Miller is already working on. And I don't know about you, but that 2015 movie was one of the most exciting films that had kept me on the edge of my seat for the duration of the entire movie. So it seems curious that Anya is more than determined to play the roles of strong women. If you have already seen the show, what do you think of the plot? What do you think of the characters? Have you read the novel that it's based on? Or seen the, any other production that starred Anya Taylor-Johnson? If so, which one was your favourite? Let me know in the comments below and as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and I will see you again in the next episode.